Hi, I'm Jeremy Lickness, and on .NET, we're talking about a way to supercharge your APIs. I saw you do almost infinite restructuring of data by only adding four lines of code using... OData. OData. Yeah. It's magic. Check it out. Hello, and welcome to another episode of On.NET. My name is Jeremy Lickness, and I'm here with Hassan today to talk about a technology that is going to blow the lid off your web APIs. It's been around for a while, but it does some amazing things, and it's called OData. Before we jump into OData, I just wanted to ask what you do here at Microsoft, sort of where do you work, and then let's dive into it. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, my name is Hassan Habib. I am a software engineer here at Microsoft. I am in uh, the CELA organization. We build all the internal tools for the legal system at Microsoft, and we get a chance to work with a lot of technologies, including Azure and ASP.NET, and it gives us the opportunity to go out there and explore these technologies and try to show to the world what, it, what it's capable of. So that's an exciting thing and something I love about Microsoft is that a lot of the technologies that we build, we use, yep. <laughs> right, internally. So you're yep. building some pretty sophisticated systems yep. Yep. and using the technology we're about to talk about. Yep, absolutely. So OData is something that I'm familiar with, and every once in a while I have to throw out this term Silverlight because <laughs> it was a technology that I loved in the past. But I was using OData in the Silverlight days, and it was a way to make REST APIs work better, if so to speak. I mean, that's oversimplifying it. But tell us a little bit about what OData is and, and why it's significant that it's come to ASP.NET Core. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in 2007, actually a little bit of history here about OData. In 2007, uh, Microsoft came up with this idea about an open data protocol. It's an idea to allow uh, services that provide data to give its clients more than just data, to give them an opportunity to query that data, filter that data, and to control how even the data would look like so it would fit the end user or the client, the consumer of that service, so it, f it would fit their need. Um, in 2010, Microsoft came together with a bunch of other companies like IBM and Red Hat, and uh, they standardized the service. They made it something that is globally standardized. People could write against it, ex know what to expect from it when they're consuming an OData uh, RESTful API. Um, just very recently, OData uh, came into ASP.NET Core, and uh, this is what I'm going to show you today. Awesome. So this is not a proprietary closed off technology. We have implementations for our engines, but it's an open specification and could be implemented anywhere. Yep, absolutely. And it's, and it's uh, already being used by other uh, technologies that are very popular. Just to put it out there, we put, we put the idea of it out there first. And um, I, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the point of OData? I want to give here a little analogy. Uh, analogies work a lot better when I'm trying to explain a point. And, uh, you know, think about it this way. Let's say, you know, I w went to Costco, for instance, and we we're buying some groceries, right? Okay. The idea here is to go to Costco and to buy the things, only the things that we need, and then we, we take that back home. Uh, the way how APIs work today, client side and server side, is that we go ask the API for all the data that it can provide, and then we filter that on the client. That seems a little bit wasteful. That would sure. be like going and buying the entirety of Costco and then throwing away half of the stuff because we don't need it. Right. That's what OData will do for you. It'll give you that kind of power to tell the API what kind of data you need and how it would look like. And you can even control things like ordering data and doing counts and all the good stuff that I'm going to show you today. And the only other thing I'll put out there is just from experience of working with it, the way it works on the server, it provides a service on the server side that simplifies the way I would program it. In other words, all this filtering and sorting and things you're going to show yep. are not things I have to manually code. I can wire in the client and it handles most of it for me. Absolutely. That's the magic of it, to do less and accomplish more, to just do as little as you can, to put away the stuff that are redundant and just give you that opportunity to do the stuff that only makes your application different from anybody else's. Nice. Let's take a look at it. Let's, let's jump at it. So. Um, the way how I'm, I want to show you this, I want to introduce OData in a way where you can use it on top of your existing API. So you already have an API 
The API already have its consumers. We want to support backwards compatibility, but we don't want to go to our clients and tell them, hey, go change our URLs, go change how you consume our data. We're going to tell them, hey, there's this added bonus, really cool bonus that you could use at your leisure, at your time, whenever you, you can to uh, consume data better and not rely on the capability of your client to do the sorting and uh, filtering and whatnot. So I, I built here just a simple API. I called it Washington Schools. It's a basic API that basically provides data for some students and schools. So every school has a bunch of students. I'm hitting here the endpoint. And these are all the schools that are within, uh, within that API within Washington State. So you have a bunch of schools in Redmond. We have a bunch in Bellevue and, uh, uh, and, and whatnot. And then you have students that belong to these schools. So if you go and hit the student's endpoint in here, you'll see a whole lot of students, right? And they have a, an ID here that reference the schools that where that student is and score and whatnot. So what I want to do here, let me ask you this. You know, if I'm building a front end, a, a client side, right? Sure. And I want to only get the students that are named Josh, for instance. What's going to happen is the API or the endpoint, you know, only provides you with all the students that are available, and then you're going to have to do that filtering on your side, right? And if I go ask the API provider to allow me to build that functionality, they're going to go and build a special endpoint and code. Right, this is the filter endpoint yeah, just yeah. to get students, just right? to get Yeah, just to get a particular student with a particular <coughs> name. Well, let me take that a, a little bit further and say, what if I want the students that have score that's over 10? Now the developers are going to go back and build another endpoint and then have to add in this functionality to, to return that kind of data. Sure. What OData does is that it gives you that kind of functionality with only four lines of code. Four lines of code. Four. Four lines of code. I'm not going to write more than four lines of code and you're going to see the tremendous amount of functionality that comes in. It's like putting your API on steroids, getting your API up and running and giving it much capabilities you know, that, that would make your clients happy and make your API stand out. So let's, let's do this. So this is just a basic uh, API that returns a bunch of data. How do we add OData to our existing API? We don't want to break existing clients. We just want to add functionality. What I'm going to go do here is I'm going to add a NuGet package. And in the NuGet package, I'm going to add look for OData for ASP.NET Core. Microsoft ASP.NET Core OData. I'm going to install that. Okay. So now this is basically going out, grabbing the package, pulling it down, wiring up the references. All the magic. Bring in all that magic. Let it do all the work for you and make your clients happy. So now I added that um, uh, NuGet package. Now we have to do a little bit of configuration. I have to teach my ASP.NET Core API to uh, understand what OData is. So I'm just going to add it in here. I'm going to say services add OData like this. Okay. That's is that one of your four lines of code? Yeah, that's the first, right? That's the first line of code, right? Right? And I'm adding here the reference to reference OData, right? Okay. Now, the other two lines. I want to allow OData to work on my existing endpoints. So I don't want to create new endpoints. So somehow I want to enable an override to my existing endpoints so it works with the same capability and functionalities of OData without having to change a URL. Traditionally speaking, OData URLs needed to have a slash OData slash whatever functionality you want to do in there. Okay. But that's not what we're trying to promote today. I'm trying to put in here an image of how to have your existing APIs provide that power of OData. So I'm going to go here and do a little bit of a dependency injection. So I'm going to here and say route builder. And then I'm going to go here and say to the route builder, enable dependency injection. Hmm. So the existing service that is doing the ASP.NET Core stuff, I'm enabling dependency injection to inject in that the, the services that OData, that, that the service that I just brought in with OData without having to add existing 
uh, URLs uh, or U, uh, URIs. The last thing I want to do here, this is my third line of code, is to add in the functionalities that I need. So what do I need? I want to expand functionality. I want the select functionality. I want the count functionality. And I want the, there is a top, max top functionality, right? And I want order functionality. These are the things, see how much control I could add. Let's, let's go to the, let's get that one in here real quick. We'll get to the max top later. That, like that. So I want these four functionality. I want the expand, the select, the count, and order by. Each one of those is something we are going to use when we call our API to get that kind of data and control the kind of data that comes to us. Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk in detail about each and every one of those uh, in a second, right? So right now we wrote one line, two lines of code. There is one last line I need to write, and that'll be it. On top of your existing git controller method, you're just going to add in, in here, enable query. And I'm going to do control period. And like magic, the red squigglies go away. That's I wish it. all my red squiggles would go away. <laughs> like that'd, that. be, that'd be cool, right? <laughs> that'd be a great feature. <laughs> be gone, and it'll just, it'll just go away. So what am I doing here? I'm allowing this endpoint, I'm putting a data annotation here to allow this endpoint to have the query power of OData, to allow all these four functionalities that I added, the extend, the order by, all these functionalities to be a part of the query. And they are optional. So your existing client will not die. Your existing client will still be able to consume the endpoint. It's only if they want to have that added free bonus, they get to add that. Now this context that you're putting the attribute on, this is a entity framework yeah. context. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that context is an entity framework context. Also for, for developers out there that are probably grunting because of the underscore, this is a generated controller. So I just right click generate controller. Originally for class members, you know, we don't use those anymore. This is this is from the past. We don't do that. It would, normally, we do this dot context. That would sure. be a class member. Anyways, so now let's run uh, our uh, API here. And the first thing we want to do, we want to test our existing endpoints. I want to make sure that my existing clients, you know, are still in. Right. So we looked at schools and we looked at students. So yep. that should behave the same way yep. and not break yep. anything already coded yep. against it. Yep. And mainly, mainly on the students part. Mainly the students part because we only added it on the endpoint that the Git students part. So we want to sure. make sure this one particular, particularly works. So okay, we're up and running. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to hit the students, and uh, lo and behold, same it brings thing back comes the data. Back. So, and I'm even verifying individual GUIDs. Yep, yep. So. <laughs> so now let me tell you this. I don't care about the student ID and I don't care about the score. I only want the names of the students okay. that are in the school. I want to form my data in the way that my front end, my client side understands without having to do any additional work. Especially if it's client side in the browser, it's very, very limited and based on how much memory, how much capability your client has. Sure. So we want to do that intensive operations on the server side, especially if you're pulling in a lot of data, right? right? So let's go ahead in here and do a little dollar sign. And then I'm going to say select equal. I want just one property of those. So I only, I'm going to go and say, hey, OData, only give me the name of the students. I don't want anything else. And then hit. See what happened Boom. here? Magic happened. Reshape the data. Reshape the data the way you want it to be, right? What if I want two things? Someone, someone would say, okay, I, is, that, is that just one thing? What if I want the name and the score? Boom. Name and score. Right? So that way, you know, you only get the data that you want. You don't buy the whole grocery store. You only get the groceries that you want. That you need, yep. Right, and then it, it returns it back. And someone may say to me, okay, I, you know, I, that's great. You know, what, what about the other functionality? What else can you do, can OData do for me from a functionality standpoint? There is this other magical feature here that is the, um, the order by. An order by will give you the option to order the data. Let's say I want to order by the name, right? Right now you have an H, you have Hassan, you have Daniel. 
the D is after the H, sure. things are not in order, right? So what if I did this? See what happened. It'll order the data for you. Now you get to go, your data is already pre-cooked for you just, just to consume it and display it on your client. So it's less processing on the client, just grab and go. Basically. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, there is another functionality I want to show you here in OData. Um, what if I want to bring in relationships between two entities? So I want the students, but also I want the schools where these students are. Okay. How do I go through that relational database model and make this happen. I could so go you're basically navigating yes, the graph. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, so what I would do is that I go in here and say expand and I say I want also the schools where these students are. And now that comes back and schools are nested into the object. Yep, as a nested object in the student object. So now you have the school and you have the student. So see how you're shaping your data the way you want it to be just to give you exactly what you need. There's one more thing I want to show you here, and this is my favorite part. Let's take the schools out for a second, the expand part out, and let's add something else. You could keep it, but I want it to be focused. What if I want to filter and say, give me only the, the students that have score uh, larger than, uh, let's say, 100. Oh. Second here. Let's go back a second here and get the... It's the score, okay. Oh, you know why this didn't happen? Because in the startup, I didn't actually add the filter. Oh, okay. Right? So, so it's constraining yeah, the it, capabilities. It, so nobody could actually attack your API. You're o they're only using what they can, what and, you allow them to. And that's one of the things that I've always been concerned with client-side controlled queries is how do you keep the client from constructing sort of a runaway yep. query. But this is one of the ways is we can limit what yep. capabilities there are. That's a good thing this happened. So we could show you, you know, how, you know, why filtering isn't happening. So I'm just going to go in here and say add filter as well. Okay. So, so now I have the filtering functionality, right? We're still down to four lines of code. So that's great. So I'm going to run my API <laughs> again. Yeah. <laughs> and then let's, let's, uh, let's try this again. This is going to be bad for people who are paid by lines of code, yep, by the way. Yep, yep, they they want to yep, build the five yep, different APIs. Yep, they're not going to like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so filter. Let's try that again. So filter where score is, is it, this is less than, let's say greater than, greater than 100. Is it going to work this time? Da -da. Ta -da. Magic. Look at that. Greater than, greater than or equal 100. So you've shaped, sorted, expanded, filtered. The data. All without changing any code except to enable the capabilities. Four lines of code. Yeah. Four lines of code, guaranteed. So this is, this is basically what OData is. And the, the reason why I'm, I wanted to come here and, and, and talk about this is because I want you to explore more. OData is way bigger. It'll take me like two days straight to tell you about all the capabilities of OData. But this is a good starting point to tell you that you can maintain your existing API, your existing functionality, and offer a lot more with doing a lot less. Even on the client side, when you have to program that, you still have to go through the list and order your data and shape your data and all that. You don't have to do none of that. Just four lines of code of magic. Just make it happen. Well, I think it's important too. There's a, a big trend today with client applications to look at different technology stacks that give that control to the client. And I don't know if a lot of .NET developers or C-sharp developers realize that this capability is available and it works with existing code. It works with ASP.NET Core, works with Entity Framework, so it's a very viable path. Very, very powerful. Yep. And, and if you have a classic ASP.NET application, it's still going to work as well, and it's going to be exactly the same way. That's awesome. Thank you so much Thank for you, showing sir. this. Appreciate that's it. A <laughs> Thank you, incredible sir. demo. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it. Yeah. And that's OData. Yeah. <laughs>